Welcome everybody. I wanted to kind of give you guys a overview of what my channel is about. My name's Eric Stockhausen. Well, the main things that are on the channel are Gwent videos, followed closely by my financial statement analysis things, which come up like once a month. I like to show people new decks, and then I kind of want to explain from my accounting background what CD Projekt's up to. So how did my channel begin? Well, I didn't start off making videos. I actually started making articles on Facebook, part of this group called Project Cardinal, which was a fan group for CD Projekt Red in their video games. I wrote about Gwent cards mainly, like Dandelion and Muster Match. Back in March and April, Standalone Gwent was a rumor, and I was really excited because I played Gwent a lot in Witcher 3. I was really excited to play it in the closed beta. I got into the closed beta because of the articles I wrote. And immediately getting in there, I wanted to shake up the meta and basically break the game. And the deck you see here is me breaking the game and punishing monster players, which I get to do a lot in my life. Um, so back then, monsters had a passive that would allow you to keep a card on the board and they would just play like Aridin and pass. So I decided I'm going to play my entire hand to your one card and I'm going to make you cry yourself to sleep. So you can see I have 702 points. They forfeit. I win the game. My second big time meme deck that I made was way later in uh, January. I made a lot of meme decks in January and this was Trick Around. This is really where I got a name for myself as a deck builder. Now like with my my poor infantry deck that I made back in October, a lot of people started copying this immediately after I made it and I, I didn't actually get any credit for making this deck uh, in the larger community because I kind of got forgotten. The uh, streamers got a lot more credit than I did, which is fine. I lived. So here the basic strategy was you buff up an ambush card in your hand, you copy it, and when your opponent plays an ambush card you destroy theirs. It was a lot of fun. I'm just going to let the game play itself out, let you guys enjoy that. Not much to say. If you want to hear my commentary, you can go to the original video. It'll be in the description. So I didn't just take decks, that make my own decks. Sometimes I learned from other players. In this case, I learned from a player called Adida. And when I posted this video, Adida actually found it. I want you to imagine. You play against some random person in Gwent on a casual match. And then a week later, you see your name on your YouTube feed your username on the YouTube feed by some Gwent YouTuber. Imagine how weird that would be and how cool it would be to see your name on YouTube and you had nothing, like, you didn't try to make that happen. So the main idea here is to pull Hemdall from my opponent's graveyard. Because Ulderic used to have an ability pull a random card from your opponent's graveyard, including gold cards. 
So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to keep on um, <laughs> using uh, Ulderic to kind of get my card advantage back. I'm not going to get it back as much as I would have liked. Gonna just keep delaying. Use those Ulderics to punish my opponent. And then play down the Hemdal to clear the board. It was a lot of fun back then. Again, that was also in January. I got a lot of meme decks created back then. Here was my third meme deck, that, uh, and the third meme deck that I created in January that got a lot of popularity. Back then you could copy uh, silver cards with Operator just like I did in my Trick Around deck. I really liked Operator, as you could probably tell. I don't really care much for Operator now since it can't copy uh, silver cards anymore. I'm going to use that monster passive to keep the other Nithral on the board. Now I have three Nithrals on the board and they all do two damage every time I play a Wild Hunt card. It's going to be a ton of value. It was very popular at this time to do uh, the siege row kind of thing with Harold. Harold was a lot of value because you do two damage to all your opponent's units. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was a lot of fun back then. I enjoyed it. My opponent didn't have anything in his graveyard to revive. He's kind of forced to keep out play playing this on. Uh, everybody was playing Decoy at the time because Decoy just gave you free card advantage. I didn't, like I said, I do financial statement analysis videos, and this was my first one I made. It was about Q3 for 2016 for CD Projekt Red. It got a lot of views, and I was actually really surprised by that. And I've continued making those. And I plan on making one soon, actually. Moving on. Uh, I also made a blacklisting video. I did a series called Gwent Concepts where I taught basic things. Like, what is blacklisting? What? How do you do a mulligan phase to maximize your chances of getting gold and silver cards? And... I posted that to Reddit. I got a fairly positive response. Some people were like, well, we already have this as an article. I'm like, well, most people don't read those articles. So I wanted to uh, make something that, you know, the average person might watch or somebody who wants to have a visual representation of what blacklisting looks like. And I, I think that video went really excellently. It could have been a little bit better with how I paced it, but... Overall, it was, gen I, I think it was probably one of my most useful videos I ever made. Fast forwarding to last month, June, I made a deck called um, Vigo's Copy Pasta. It's all about making a giant unit with ambassadors and then giving it resilience, copying its stats with Frangilla Vigo. And then uh, having this huge board. It was a lot like my poor fucking infantry deck that I made in the very beginning of Gwent. Now, like my poor fucking infantry deck, I didn't get very much credit for it. And a lot of YouTubers made very similar decks shortly after that. In this case, Swim made his version of it, which was slightly better at baiting out your opponent into passing so that you could create this huge board without worrying about control effects. It was... Swim got credit for it. It was sad, but I'm not that... Uh, I'll live. <laughs> Swim also uh, made his own version of the Trick Around deck. Well, anyways, thank you for watching. I have a lot of cool videos coming out in the future. I hope this kind of retrospective helped you and I the general trend right now is that this channel is growing really fast I gained like 
200 subscribers in the span of like a week. It was amazing and I haven't had that kind of growth ever before. Again, great videos to come. Thanks everybody.